Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play Wario Land 4 for the Game Boy Advance. And uh, I did go back to the Fiery Caverns and got myself a Golden High score. All I really did, though, was make it to the goal post in time and uh, didn't take any damage. And you wouldn't believe how much of a significant impact that made in uh, getting that high score because I barely scraped by. Oh, my goodness. Oh boy, I thought I was about to lose it again, but uh, lucky me, I actually succeeded that time. So uh, that's about it as far as the alterations are concerned and what I made in uh, successfully making that run through of that uh, level again off screen. But uh, enough about that. Uh, we are here in positive territory, and positive territory it is indeed, because this level is my favorite level in all of Wario Land 4. And it, it definitely feels like a perfect culmination of the things of, that have led up to this point, especially when you consider the previous two games in mind and how much more puzzle-oriented they were. Uh, this level is basically kind of like a Metroidvania-esque level. This one I jumped, whatever. Um, but yeah, this level functions like an actual hotel, and um, there are a lot of twists, turns, and a lot of the puzzle solving actually comes from uh, paying attention to visual details. So, um, as I've said before, this place does run like an actual hotel, and that means uh, that you have things like room numbers to pay attention to, as well as different floors, and you have to pay attention to the positioning of these doors and floor positions in order to find uh, different assortments of treasure. On top of that, you have rooms like these that have a frog switch icon on them, uh, meaning that we'll have to go back through here if we want to get the rest of the treasure for this level. But yeah, this level is easily the most complex out of all of them. It's definitely the most non-linear, but in a good way, not in an overwhelming kind of way. And I don't know, there's something very satisfying about it too, like unearthing all of these secrets that are out and about in this level definitely feels re more rewarding than it's ever been because you feel like you actually overcame it and paid attention to like the schematics of the level and not necessarily just going, oh, well, I hit this random spot in the wall that just happened to be weak to my shoulder bash. Good for me! <laughs> I'm looking at you, Pinball Zone! God fucking damn it! I swear, I, I, I think the number one thing that was the weirdest thing to adjust to getting back into playing this game again was just how controlled Warriors jumps are in this game. Like, in most other games, like, you kind of have, like, predetermined, like, jump heights based off of how you press the A button like if you press it lightly you go one way but if you press it all hold it just long enough you go all the way and this game is kind of like the moment you let go of the A button it's like you just immediately drop down and like obviously this was something I was used to growing up but like after playing so many platformers since you know I've played this game it's just so weird to get the hang of and that's why I miss these weird jumps because like I jump lower than I thought I did I'm like oh right because this is Warrior Land 4 and jumps are a little bit more controlled than usual I'm not stating that as a bad thing mind you I'm not trying to knock against this game in any capacity as far as the controls game is concerned because I think it's pretty much damn near perfect if I had to be honest it's just so it's a thing that's a little bit weird to get used to when you've been playing so many platformers all these years, you know? You've played so many indie games, so many Mega Man games. Playing something fresh for once and it's like, wow, <laughs> okay. Be careful not to hit that football. I, I do believe if Wario actually hits that in bat form, he actually ends up eating the football and he had to come back. I guess Warrior, even Warrior finds sustenance in uh, footballs, apparently. He just loves sports so much, he'd rather eat it all up. <laughs> oh, and I guess that's one other puzzle that uses the Frozen 8 thing for something. I actually completely forgot about this room. 
to the puzzle solving here is any more complex. I'd actually argue it's simpler. Not really much you can do with the Frozen Warrior ability, honestly. But I, I, I was actually looking back through my footage of the last video where I kind of bum-rushed through the fucking icicles. And I, I was thinking about that. I was like, wait a second. Why didn't I just, like, take one of the ice dudes and, like, fly through there like I probably should have? That's probably what I should have done looking back, but whatever. The only thing that confuses me about this level is that, like, this feels like kind of a missed opportunity where they have this block staircase all set up, but, like, these blocks are both on, like, their respective floors, so it's like, why are these here? What's the point of this? Maybe it serves another purpose, I guess, but I don't know. I would have made it to where, like, you found another block on another floor and then, like, I've done a little bit more of that. You know, going back and forth. I mean, it'd be more backtracking, but it'd be fun puzzle-solving base uh, backtracking for sure. All right, so this here I think is probably going to be the final mini game for the playthrough. Uh, basically, we jump through here, and these weird uh, background tiles here actually teleport us back to the entrance, all the while making this weird ear screeching sound that kind of sounds like something I'd hear off of, like, something like Great Ears or something, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm actually gonna see if there's something down here. I think there probably is. I don't like how this place has its own kind of story going to it, too. This level definitely has a fair bit of atmosphere to it. Like, you can go out here, for example, and you see all that mist kind of accompanying the floor here and it's like you listen to the music and it's kind of like eerily welcoming in a sort of way like it, it, it feels welcoming but it's also kind of really eerie and weird and it's like it, it kind of gives you the vibe of like okay guess I'll check this weird ass looking place out then I suppose and uh maybe I'm looking into it too far but uh it's nice to see that even little franchises like this kind of have their own stories to tell with the kind of levels they have. Maybe they didn't plan on going for that kind of approach, but with the atmosphere they certainly gave us to work with here, um, it definitely feels evident to some degree. See, you can have ma atmosphere in more than just Metroid games, Nintendo. Even in the most unexpected of places. <laughs> so I'm just gonna come over here. Now granted, I do think... Yeah, here we are. Now granted, this level is actually a little bit smaller than you'd think if you actually know where to go. Again, this level is more of a maze, if anything. Like, it's not as straightforward as the other levels have been. But, uh... If there's ever a place you would get lost in in Warrior Land for, it would probably be this stage, honestly. And honestly, it kind of feels somewhat like the like a proper like uh, stress relief stage too. Like it's not a terribly difficult one either, but it's like the perfect uh, stage that's set in stone for you know going about exploring the place while not feeling too terribly tensed up about it either. I think it's right here. Yes, got it. Woo. And wow, that was everything, huh? Well, not quite. I, th I think we still have a CD to grab. And uh, normally I don't usually have the video or the motivation to do more than two videos a day, but um, I love this game so much that um, I'm just going to keep seeing it again and again. And also I'm actually about to hit the end of the game too. Like once we finish up the Sapphire Passage, that's going to be about it for Warrior Land 4, honestly. 
Um, it's been a fun ride for sure. I've been meaning to get to this game for a while, but uh, lo and behold, I finally did it. One of my most favorite childhood games ever. I'm getting kind of teary-eyed here, guys. I'm getting to it to the end. I mean, once we finish this level and finish the boss here, we're hitting end game, man. So just gonna take this guy right here, squish this block. Unfortunately for us, this lantern can't cure us of our obesity. Um, um, handicaps. But luckily for us, it didn't take us too long. And now, all we need to really do is head for those frog switch doors. And that's going to be about it, honestly. Uh, this, the escape sequence here is nothing special, I won't lie. But I think the main bulk of the stage more than makes up for it. And luckily for us, most of the enemies don't respawn uh, here either, outside of like the status uh, spawning enemies like that one, for instance. Um, actually, shouldn't I head in that direction? Uh-oh. Can't be dawdling too much now. Remember what happened last time, Ken. Don't be stupid. Get over here, you. Okay, I was right to take this fruit first. I was going to take the other one first, but uh, that wouldn't be such a smart idea. Why well, would it? Oh god, barely dodged that. Ooh, I like how they got these blocks set up to act as kind of an intermission between you and these uh, zombie acid-spitting ghost things. Except, uh, oh boy. Come here. God damn it. Spit where I want you to. Oh, okay, I jumped a little too early. Here we are. Luckily, the coin trail here is going to lead us to our destination, and voila, we have the final disc in the game. Oh, right, you can actually go underneath these. I forgot about you. That's kind of weird. Whatever, buddy. And we are out. Peace. Not the best high score I can muster, but uh, for the brevity of this playthrough, I think it'll suffice. We spent 13 minutes on that level. Goddamn. <laughs> Again, I don't get why people say this game is like, like the game's weakness here is that it's so short because like as long as the level length is fine it's like that shouldn't be a problem especially of this platformer genre you know um anywho <clears throat> we're gonna fight cat bat and much like cractus he's a very exploitable boss um almost on the same level of cractus uh but that's mostly not going to be coming into play until uh, the last phase of the fight uh so, we're just going to see how we do. <clears throat> I beat Aerodent. We can do this. Man, this guy's actually kind of creepy now that I see him up here on my TV screen. But, anywho, stay out of the water. That fish there uh, means business. Ah oh man, I'm, al I'm already messing up. So, Catbat here doesn't have a whole lot of HP. Uh, he actually has about as much as, uh, or barely much more than uh, Cractus does in comparison. Um, basically, you want to wait for him to spawn these waterfall things and uh, jump on top of that so you can hit him in the face. Why did I do that? Why am I stupid? Um, you also want to watch out for the spiky things that he spits out of his tongue. Uh, those will slow you down immensely, and we wouldn't want that now, would we? 
However, um, the further you go into the fight, the waterfall uh, here actually starts alternating to where you need to time your jumps a little bit better if you want to hit the top of his head here. Now here is where the fun begins. Now the balls start turning red, and this time, they actually hurt you. But unfortunately, this creates a double-edged sword for our cat bat friend here. Um, because he's left his head completely open, uh, this also means it leaves open an exploit. Um, if Wario can stop bouncing like a fucking dumbass! Um... <sighs> but yeah, if you can actually manage to bounce in such a way... ...and not do that, you, like, you gotta land square on his head, basically, to keep that from happening. And not do that but if you can constantly like bounce as he jump on his head perfectly you can stay suspended above his head and uh just keep ground pounding even in between the inf invincibility frames and once the invincibility frames wear off you ground pound and then just keep jumping the problem was that i didn't land squarely on his weak point like there's a part of his weak point that you can ground pound but then the rest of his head he kind of bounces you off, and you need to keep bouncing in the middle of the head to keep the exploit going. Unfortunately, I didn't execute it well because I'm playing on a GameCube controller, and I'm Johnny, aren't I? God damn it. Ugh. No Johns, Ken. Please, no Johns. But anywho, right in front of us is the final passageway of Warrior Land 4, the Golden Pyramid. But before we tackle that... Uh, we're gonna tackle the last mini game of uh, our playthrough, which is uh, Warriors Roulette. Um, this one's nothing special. It's basically Simon says. You just copy what they want. And he can only mess up once, so it's not quite forgiving. Also, I have terrible memory, so... Okay, that's actually kind of hilarious, I won't lie. Oh, that one's kind of easy. And for every three uh, wins you get, you get a frog coin, so. Oh, I thought that was the... the fuck am I doing? Uh, whatever, that's the barbershop minigame. I obviously didn't really care if you couldn't already tell. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I... In a nutshell, I don't really care for any of these minigames, but if you want to make the boss fights more tolerable, I guess, especially in super hard mode... Uh, this is the way to go. Um, but the worst part about super hard mode is that they make the items in the item shop more expensive too. So that means you gotta spend more time playing these fucking things. I don't know. I've never been the one to care for like mini games all that much unless they're like really, really good ones. Like the ones in the, the Golden Saucer from Final Fantasy VII, for example. Now that's how you fucking make a minigame compilation, folks, even if by a complete and total fucking accident. Anywho, next up is going to be the finale of Warrior Land 4, so uh, stay tuned, guys. I'll see you guys then.